Good morning. Oh, good, good afternoon. Okay. So, this is Earth. We occupy about 3% of this whole thing. There, we got 7 billion people, 200 countries, 60 trillion dollars of wealth and money, resources, land and goods. We have also created a system to live in. And though it's not perfect, it seems to work for us, and I'm talking about democracy. Every country in the world strives towards democracy. It's considered to be the best form of government. Everyone wants, to be, uh, everyone wants his country to be more democratic. But what is democracy? It's defined as the rule of majority. Okay, so let's come back to the 60 trillion dollars of wealth and see what we got and how it is shared amongst us. This is pretty astonishing. The majority of people, 69%, own only 3% of world's wealth. And these people aren't ruling anything. So in fact, it's not the majority, but the minority of people that own the majority of wealth and that are in power. So we see clear undemocratic relationship between the wealth and the people. And that applies to all countries in the world and this dynamic only continues throughout the 21st century. The world itself is not fair. And you know how they always say that life is not fair and you should just deal with it? Well, I don't think that's the right approach to life. I think life should be fair. I think we should make it fair. So let's try to understand why that happens. And to do so, we need to understand what motivates us in life and why we do what we do. I believe that there are two most powerful motivators that are constantly in battle between uh, each other inside us. Uh, well, it's selfishness versus conscious. So let's start with conscious. Um, so, um, yeah, it's our inner ability to distinguish good from bad. When conscience motivates us, we sacrifice our own welfare for a cause or a principle that we regard as more important than our own lives. We can see a bunch of examples of uh, conscience in history as well. The earnest sacrifices that people have made, we changed the world and made it a better place for generations today. And for me, the best example of conscience is the history, is, in history is the act of civil disobedience. It's a refusal to obey certain laws, governmental demands uh, for the purpose of influencing governmental policy. So basically, people sacrifice their own freedom for the good of many. And the civil rights movement in the United States in the 60s and 70s is the obvious example. This woman. Rosa Parks, was arguably the influence that started that movement in 1955. She refused to give up her seat for a white man. A police officer arrested her. She was charged with a violation of the segregation law and incarcerated. She did so because she didn't want to tolerate segregation anymore. The law was unfair to her and all African Americans. So she regarded racial equality as more important than her own freedom. Her conscience motivated her, and as a result, people followed her lead, stood up against the injustice, and ultimately won. So that's conscience. Now, selfishness. Selfishness is the exact opposite of conscience. Usually when it motivates us, we want money, fame, power, or everything at once. And there are even more obvious examples in history of selfishness that only led us to conflicts and deaths. The most popular are dictators, world conquerors, such as Napoleon, Mussolini, Hitler. Yeah, Hitler. Hitler, in Mein Kampf, wrote that he wanted his nation to be the most powerful nation in the world. He didn't care about others. He wanted to be the most powerful man in the world. When a chain of events made him the counselor of Germany, he was willing to do anything to achieve his goal. That led us to the worst conflict in history with an absolutely horrific body count. And selfishness is what made him do it. It makes us abandon any, um, selfishness makes us abandon any conscience on the way to power. So justifying means for the end is what leads us to the unfair word that I talked before. And we can see traces of selfishness today as well. It followed us um, after 1945 through Cold War where the two superpowers pursued their selfish interests. Here's a list of all US bombings since World War II. I think it demonstrates very well the, the other repercussion of selfishness, which is when we acquire influence, we usually use it to oppress others, those without influence. And those major global conflicts that I talked before, they derive from personal selfishness. Our generation, the millennials, 66% of, of the, all of the millennials said that they wanted to, uh, to start a business as their career. 
So the society leaves only one goal for us, which is pursue personal success, in that case through business. The system becomes more and more materialistic, and unfortunately, in today's society, selfishness becomes the stronger motivator. And that's reinforced by the system of capitalism. Think about it. Before, when someone bought a car, it was really just a mean of transport. It was used for decades, then passed on, passed on to children of the family. Now, when the designs are updated every year, car is used for about three or four years, and then we buy a new model. So a car is more than just a mean of transport. We use it to show our status or to be in vogue as well. This is how time changes our society, and our society becomes more materialistic. It affects absolutely everything, music, art, transportation, clothes, real estate. This mentality is present in AAS too, as well as in all IB education. As a senior, I experience the effects of capitalism and know what it's like to put work, for personal, uh, to put work above personal success, to put personal success above everything else in my life. We have been fed a myth that money buys happiness. If that were true, then the richest people would be the happiest people. And I know personally that it's not true. We have overestimated money, and as a result, we consume more than we create. We forgot that creating is actually much more fun than consuming, which created an atrophy in ch of change. Generations in the past, they were more liberal, more hopeful for a better tomorrow. They went against established ideas, challenged them. I think this mentality needs to be brought back. Generations today, they're focused on how to conform to the system rather than on how to change the system. And the way to bring change to our society is to embrace, embrace our conscience, which hopefully this speech encouraged you to do. So think again and make it happen. Thank you.